Got given a couple of Panasonic Hi-Fi VCRs here to take a look at. Uh, I'm just going to get these things to look over, get them working, so that I can donate them to Value Village and get rid of them and get someone a machine that works for someone who needs one. So let's take a look. I got these for free, and I'm giving them away. For you guys waiting to see another VCR video, your wait is over. I have a Panasonic uh, Omnivision. This one is a model number PV4522. And uh, let's see whether it does anything. So, load up a tape. Snow. This is one of the later Panasonic models, what's the date on this one? I was looking for the date code on this. It looks like uh, 2002. January 30th, 2002. Made in Indonesia. Unfortunately, this is one of the really cheap I mean, look at the drum. The motor is on the top on this. They got really, really cheap on these ones. And this likely is just dirty heads. I see a lot of debris on the head itself here. If I get you a close-up, you'll see it. So you see. And there's debris down here on the head, on the lower drum. And all the heads look dirty on this, which doesn't surprise me considering where it came from. But I think this one deserves a service. So let's uh, pull the mechanism out and um, we'll give this one a full service. Of course, these ones were from the era that were not designed to be serviced. So I don't even think the deck will unplug on this. The deck, I think, is, is uh, permanently hardwired to the... Uh, the circuit board on these. Two thousand and two. This would I would have never worked on one of these because this one would have been sold. Um, you know, probably 2002 or 2003. I left the business in 2003, so I, I probably never saw any of these particular ones come in for service. They would have been uh, they would have been too new, other than maybe for the odd cleaning. But as far as the mechanism goes, I doubt that I ever saw any of these particular units just because of the the vintage of it. But to open them up, we have to pull the mechanism down. And then we can remove the screws that hold the chassis in. This unit was given to me, so what's going to happen with this unit, once it's working, is I'll donate this probably to Value Village or something. Just because I, I, don't, need, I don't need any VHS machines. out of this mechanism should lift up aha yeah as I thought it's permanently attached to the uh, the board by these soldered in wires but at least you can lift the mechanism up on these units so you can service things like the belt and in this case I want to do the mode switch just because it's been sitting around for you know, a long time. You know for sure that this mode switch is going to need cleaning. Now it's soldered down to the board, but I think I can probably get it up enough that I can pop it apart. I can get the little clips underneath here and pop them open and pop the switch apart. There we go. 
and it is, as you can see, the mode switch is pretty bad. That should be silver, and it's not. It's, it's turned brown just from uh, oxidation. And for this, because this switch is accessible, I'm going to use some deoxid D100L, which is the just the liquid in the squeeze bottle. We'll put a couple drops on here. That's all that's going to be needed is a couple drops. And then I'll just use a cotton bud to clean it up. You can see the dirt that's coming off of here now. Put some more and just leave it on the switch to lubricate and keep the switch contacts clean down the road. We'll do the same on the actual contacts on the switch here. Some deoxid on that and then just wipe them off with the So let's identify some of these components that we see in the base here on the main circuit board. We've got the tape end sensors. This is for the supply side, so this uh, detects when the tape gets to the end when in play or fast forward. This one's on the take up side, which detects when the tape is back to the beginning, when your uh, tape has been rewound. Of course, they detect the light that's shining out from the uh, infrared uh, emitter and how that works is it shines through a hole in the bottom of the tape here and there are channels that go through either side of the tape and the clear leader will allow the light to pass through this little hole here on each edge of the tape when the tape is rewound or at the end and that's what stops the machine the other two sensors we've got here is the take up uh, reel and the are the supply reel and the take up reel and what these do is these are also photo interrupters so there's a light emitting diode on one side and a photo cell on the other and so this is the photo cell side and this is the LED side over here I can tell because the boards marked collector and emitter and the other side will be marked anode and cathode for the diode side and what this does is this shines a beam of light across this little gap here and the tape spools themselves have a series of slots and as they rotate the slots make or break the light passing through here which creates an on off on off state so that the VCR first of all will know if the reel has broken or if the reel is jammed because it won't be turning but secondly that's how it figures out how far you are into the tape for the remaining uh, tape indicator and when you're on fast forward and rewind so it knows when to start slowing the tape down so that it has a chance to stop when it hits the end so if either of these sensors go bad here uh, you'll either have no tape play whatsoever or when you go to fast forward or rewind it will go very very slow uh, specifically if this one goes bad if the take up side goes bad the machine will not play or record you press play it'll play for a second and then it'll stop because it will think that the reel has stopped turning and it'll go into an emergency shutdown if this one fails the unit likely will still play it will likely still record it will likely still search forward and search reverse your remaining tape indicator will not show on the screen and when you go into fast forward or rewind it will do it very slowly because it won't know how far the, uh, the end of the tape is so it won't speed the, the uh, motor up 
To line up the switch, I have to make sure that the cassette basket is fully retracted because, of course, the cam gear turns with that. So with the tape basket fully retracted, the little index pin on the bottom of the cam gear here is facing straight down like this in this position. So we line up the little keyway over here in the same position. That way, when I put the mechanism back in, it'll line up with the cam gear and our alignment will be correct. And there actually is a couple plugs on this. There is a plug here for the capstan motor, I just noticed that. And there's a plug over here for the erase head. So you have to make sure that they're properly lined up when you put the mechanism back in. But the other plugs for the head, they are soldered in. Kind of a stupid design. So we have to make sure that we get enough clearance here to clear the tape sensors. And then we're able to drop it back in. should be, I think, back in place. Yep, now I can put the screws back in and we'll test it and see whether it does anything. I'll have to clean the heads first, but we'll put the screws back in and then we'll clean the heads and test it. Bottle's getting kind of empty. I'm gonna have to get some more. Clean the control head. And of course, the pinch roller. I just got all the audio files all upset with me for using isopropyl alcohol and rubber parts. Oh well. I'm also going to clean the lower drum with this, not the upper drum, but the lower drum. So I position the heads away from where I'm working and I'm going to wipe the lower portion of the drum because it's quite dirty. You don't want to touch video heads with a Q-tip or a cotton swab. So I've cleaned the upper drum, but I'm only doing the upper portion of it away from the heads. I'm not going to use it anywhere near the heads just to try and clean it off. For the heads, I'm going to use a piece of paper. A regular piece of writing paper. Fold it over, just get it wet, and then we just hold it up against the head drum. Press fairly firmly on it with your thumb, and then rotate the head in a counterclockwise position. We always go counterclockwise because that's the direction that the tape or the head actually turns. So the strength on the head chips are in that direction. So you can see there was a fair bit of dirt on here. More than a fair bit with lots. Now we can test this machine again and see if it's uh, improved. A few dropouts on this tape, that's for sure. Those are scratches that you see.
there really wasn't much to VCRs by the time it got to this point in the game. They were put together by robots, very, very simple, and that's why you could buy a VCR for, I don't know, I think the last one that I bought, I paid like, I don't know, 89 bucks or something for it. They were pretty inexpensive. Front cover just snaps on. We have to open up the little lid here. And I think my recording's at the end is what it is there. Where's my rewind on this? Yep, my recording's at the end. Just take the tape out. So to put the front panel on, you have to open up the lid. Otherwise, you'll never clear this little catch. And then the front panel just snaps on, basically. You just do that. And it pops on. This was my recording test tape. And you'll see here, this was, I can't leave this on because it's Game of Thrones, but this was a tape that I uh, had done some recording on to demonstrate what happens with Macrovision. Actually, this was the demonstrate the erase head, you see? This was the demonstrate where the, when the erase head came on, how the delay it took. Because of course, when there's a recording on the tape, the erase head is over here. So when you start a new recording, unless you had flying erase heads, which erase one uh, frame of video at a time or one field, there's a delay that from the time it takes the tape to get from here to go all the way around the head drum, which is why you saw the, the, the color bars flashing in the background and then the picture came down from the top. It cleared from the top because as the uh, signal was erased, as the previous recording was erased from the tape, that was what this tape was. This tape was to demonstrate the effects of an erase head that wasn't working. As I say, this tape I just had sitting here and I had some stuff recorded on. So this is actually a tape that I can record on. This is a, a, a tape that I was using for demonstrating, which is good. Let's do a recording on this machine. I'll record color bars. Of course, the machine is stuck in SLP, the slowest speed, and I don't have a remote control to change it. So that's the problem with these decks is that the the later generations did not have a speed button on the unit itself. The unit is still perfectly usable for someone who wants to play tapes and this unit is likely going to end up at Value Village because I have no need for VCRs. Um, can't, can't, give, can't donate them if they don't work though so they have to be working otherwise they just go in the scrap heap. So this will end up probably at Value Village and someone will buy it for 10 or $15 dollars and they'll have themselves a good machine that will uh, serve the purpose of playing their older tapes. I'd keep it myself except for I've, I've, I've probably got a dozen of these machines and I've got too many VCRs so I don't need any more so time to start getting rid of the surplus stuff and uh, the only machines that I actually keep for my own use are Super VHS machines because that's all I ever used when I was using VHS all I ever used was Super VHS I didn't use standard okay so this should be recorded enough now we can see how this is recording if it is recording which it should be and there it is for what it's worth crappy EP speed it looks horrible but it is what it is this interference you see here that's you see the interference there that's actually interference that's coming from the plasma screen that's being picked up by the machine because the top's not on it there's no shielding but those dots you see that's not on the tape if I were to play this on a CRT monitor it wouldn't show that that's just this plasma it does it with everything another problem with these cheap cheap machines was the mechanism the front loading mechanism was a joke I've got one identical to this by the way um, the last machine I bought brand new I bought it Radio Shack I think it was it might have been when they were the source but I think it was they were still Radio Shack at the time and uh, anyway uh, it would have been 2003 I bought one very last one after I left the shop so I couldn't buy one through the shop that I worked for as I, I left, had left there and wasn't going to go back and do business with my former place of employment so I went into Radio Shack and they had one I think it was 89 bucks and I bought it and it's done it ever since new uh, on the regular length of tapes like this there's no problem it loads every single one but uh, on the short custom loads for whatever reason the spring on these custom loaded tapes is stronger than a regular tape and a lot of times when you put the tape in 
Oh, they'll load that time, but if you push the tape too hard, it won't, it'll kick it back out. It's going to, it's going to behave this time. But that was another problem with these, these flimsy plastic mechanisms where they were uh, some tapes they didn't like, and it was always the short ones. Here's another one, exactly the same model. Got it from the same place, same person gave me two of them. This one doesn't play either. So we know what the problem's gonna be on this. It's just probably gonna be dirty heads. Let's just confirm that. Another one, made in Indonesia. This one's from uh, 2002. I mean, the mode switch probably could use a cleaning on this, but as I say, I'm, I'm not going to bother because this is this is just going to go to the uh, second-hand place to get resold, so there's no real point in going the extra mile on this thing. But we'll clean it and see whether it plays. Maybe this one will have another fault. Looks like dirty heads. And it is fairly dirty. We'll do the uh, control head as well. And this one plays now. This one's playing. And we'll see how it works with this lighter tape. Is it going to have the same problem? Because uh, this one threaded okay. Of course, the first time I pushed the tape in there, it kicked it out. Because all of these, uh, all these mechanisms tend to have a lot of problems. There we go. If you push the tape in too hard, it won't thread. That's a that's a known issue on all these machines. If you, if, if, like what I do, I just give the tape a shove. If you push the tape in too hard on these ones, these lighter tapes, they don't work. Just tap it lightly and it'll go in. That was a known issue, so there's nothing I can do to fix that. That's just the cheap plastic. So I'll just do a recording on this one. I can actually tune something in off my uh, cable on this one because the channels are actually stored. The other one, all the channels were erased and without the remote control, of course I can't add any of the analog channels back in. Not that any of these machines would be useful for anybody that uh, was you know, going to try and uh, use it to record stuff uh, unless uh, you're using it with a cable box or something, but in that case the audio video inputs would be sufficient and I could select line one or line two on the other one just with the channel buttons like I can on this one. But this one here has got all the channels still programmed so I'm just recording something off of channel seven which is one of my in-house media player channels from some stuff that I did and we'll see how this uh, plays back in a minute. Okay, time for playback. And there's playback. Unit is fixed. Now off to the second hand store this one goes to. Thanks for watching.